Dr. Galea, I understand that you were in Wuhan just two weeks ago. Could you provide some color? What did you see? How bad was it? Two weeks is a long time in the history. It's actually coming up to three weeks now, a long time in the history of this epidemic. At that time, the lockdown still had not happened, but it was very clear that there was a very rapidly heightening sense of alert, and the uh, closure of the airport happened only the day after I left. At that point, visiting one hospital, um, it was quite clear uh, how what a great work Load they had uh, of people who were presenting with fever. There were 2,000 cases processed by that fever clinic uh, just in the past two weeks, and at that time, 13 cases uh, had uh, been identified. But the numbers, as people know, have been uh, rolling upwards uh, all the time since uh, that visit. And so the situation, of course, has grown to such an extent uh, that uh, it, it will be uh, causing great stress uh, on the health system. Uh, Dr. Galea, some say that this week is pretty significant because we could see some signs that the virus has been contained. How optimistic are you about that? It's difficult to predict, and the best answer to this is we don't know. Uh, having said that, last week we have seen a few days now in which uh, the numbers have declined. The, the reported numbers of both confirmed and suspected cases has collectively declined uh, for a few days almost running, with one day exception. So uh, one can, it, it, in themselves, these numbers mean nothing until enough time has passed well beyond the incubation period of the disease. But uh, we're happier to see them go down rather than up. At the same time, uh, we are watching closely the epidemic also in other provinces. There are uh, 10 provinces where we are seeing numbers slowly uh, rise up. And specifically in Zhejiang, Guangdong, and Henan, uh, there are, those are numbers to watch, still uh, appearing to be under control. But it is only last week that Beijing has announced that we are at the early stage of community transmission, uh, and we must be vigilant. So having said that, what stage is the, is the epidemic at and what would it take? What signs are you looking out for before you can conclude that we're at a turning point? Well, the best sign is once one uh, sees the numbers uh, decline, reach a peak and, uh, uh, and eventually uh, decline. And then you can watch, as I said, well beyond the incubation period to see that there are no new cases appearing. Um, we are not at that stage yet, yet. And though we are hopeful that in Wuhan and maybe even in Hubei, um, if this decline persists, then uh, we could see that province breathing a much needed uh, sigh of relief, but it is too early to announce that. At the same time, the figures in the other provinces uh, are still quite flat, going up a little one day, down a little the other, uh, and it is uh, absolutely impossible to reach a conclusion at this stage that containment has worked um, and that it is possible to look forward to that decline. We know that the Chinese are beginning to travel and they're going back to work this week. Does that change the dynamic of the epidemic? Does it probably heighten the chances of transmission uh, going forward? Transmission can only happen when people meet. And so uh, when people are coming back to work, there is, of course, the possibility of some uptick in transmission. How much of that will happen depends on 
uh, how deeply is the return to work. We are watching this part also carefully. We cannot say, uh, it, it is not clear yet that there has been a full return to work. Um, there is, uh, for example, a return to major construction projects. But here in Beijing, there is a strong suggestion that uh, companies that can allow their workers to do teleworking, to use the telephone and the internet, um, this is still being very much encouraged. So one realizes that the control measures have to be a balance between maintaining some essential economic activity and economic development, because that in itself, um, if it is constrained, can lead itself to important health consequences, reduction in quality of life, even increased deaths. So you have to, uh, there, there has to be a balance between uh, the uh, economic activity and the containment measures. We are hoping that this balance uh, will be achieved and still uh, re allow the decline to happen. One final question. China is still facing uh, shortages of medical supplies. What's WHO doing to, to alleviate the problem? The shortages are, are very strong and it is, uh, it is, it is painful. Um, it is less uh, WHO. WHO is not a supply and logistic. Uh, it, it's more a technical support agency. But there has been an activation of the UN system. Uh, and uh, just a few uh, minutes ago, before we had this interview, uh, we were just talking with the rest of the UN system, um, our colleagues in UNICEF, FUNDP, uh, and I know uh, that other agencies are involved in uh, procuring and helping to meet the shortage. But in China, largely, the, the shortage is being met, or at least effort, strongest efforts to meet the shortages is through mobilization of resources in other provinces, uh, as well as the ramping up of production.